A float with Henry Morgan. Dolores Pizarro, masquerading as Antoinette de Lacy, makes Geoffrey Hunter fall in love with her so that she can get from him the secret to Henry Morgan's plans. Not realizing what he is doing, Geoffrey tells her all he knows. Diaz tells Kitty that Geoffrey is in love with Dolores and hints that harm will come to both Geoffrey and herself. Kitty doesn't believe Geoffrey is in love with Dolores but is frightened of the threats Diaz has made. So she goes to Geoffrey to warn him and he promises to talk of this later in the Dolphin Tavern. Morgan tells Geoffrey that he now knows the full details of the raid he is going to make on the Nicaraguan coast and tells Geoffrey to return with him to the ship where he will discuss the plans. So return with me, Hunter, to the Flying Gull and we'll go to my quarters and talk in privacy. Will it be all right to leave the men to the loading, Captain Morgan? Uh, Matthews can take the tally. He's a good man. He'll keep the crew moving to get those provisions aboard. Oh, uh, Captain Morgan, I... Notice late this afternoon, a strange arrival in the harbor. A drab, black-looking sailing ship. It dropped anchor over there. But I doubt if you can make it out in the darkness. I know, lad. I saw it myself. She's from London. London, eh? Yes, but she's not many happy sailors aboard. She's a convict ship. Full of poor devils come to sweat their hearts out in the swamps in the heat of Jamaica. Poor devils. You take the plight of convicts and slaves very much to heart, don't you, Hunter? Yes, I hate the very sound of bond servant or slave. Uh, you'll soon get used to them sailing with me. After a raid, I usually bring back a few hundred Spanish slaves to be sold here. Uh, there's money in it. I want no proceeds from that sort of buccaneer. Don't worry. It's my own personal little game. In 12 months' time, I'll warrant you'll have forgotten your fancies. Sit down, Hunter. Help yourself to a drink. Thank you, but no. I'm all ears to learn what you have to tell me. Look you again at this map. See? The coast of Nicaragua. Tonight I received word from my spy. The mule train has arrived. Do you know where? Yes. See this spot here? Mount Santa Paula. That is where we go. But Captain Morgan... That's not a coastal town. Why, it's inland. You couldn't make a raid in a town which is not on the coast. Your men are seamen, not soldiers. That is where the treasure is, and that's where we're going. But to take seamen off a ship and expect them to fight like soldiers, why, they, they'd be cut off and wiped out. You've not looked closely at the map, lad. Santa Paula is not on the coast, I admit. But it is on a river. A river? You would take your ships up a river? Why not? I've done it before. But at the mouth of the river, there's bound to be a fort. There have been other forts. <laughs> You've a lot to learn, lad, about buccaneering. We'll leave Port Royal so that my little fleet arrives at the mouth of that river at the darkest part of night, when there's no moon, and the ships will be hushed and no sign of light or life. If we do this, my ships can sail past that fort. Yes, but you have to return. Yes, that's all right. Santa Paula is only a matter of three or four miles up the river, and it is deep and wide. They'll not expect an attack. We'll take them by surprise at night. Darkness makes men fear. And by morning, the town will be ours. A certain number of men will return by land. The fort is built to withstand attack from the front. But attack from the rear it won't take long to overcome the garrison that's quartered there. I see it sounds like a dream to me. It has its chances, it has its risks. That is why I like it. Although the Spanish think that they've put their treasure out of reach of my hands, they are by no means fools. They'll be alert for some little time, but as the days go on and there's no sign of Captain Morgan, they will relax. You do not intend to sail immediately? Oh, no, no, not yet. The other ships coming with me have to be provisioned yet. But unless you attack soon... Are you not afraid that the treasure may slip through your hands? When you arrive, you'll find it's already on its way to Spain. Look, you lad, you do not think I'd leave a thing like that to chance, do you? My spy has sent me complete information. The ship that Spain is sending to take the treasure away is not expected for two more months. 
I'm quite safe in dallying for a while. Part of the pleasure of the attack is the enjoyment of the anticipation of it. When do we sail? I'll give you a warning. Have no fear of that. Just be prepared for word at any time. Ah, it's good to talk these things over with you, Hunter. Talking about these matters seems to make the plans formulate before my eyes. I can see it all. That river with the fort at the entrance. The jungle around it, ready, crouched like a tiger waiting to spring. Its green mantle over the fort. The river, brown and sluggish, dyeing the deep blue sea with its dirty hue. The greenness of the vegetation coming down, bending low to sweep in the water, hiding all animal and reptile life. Then suddenly up the river, around a bend, a clearing, grey and white. Buildings lying simmering in the tropical heat. Santa Paula, lying like a rich, fat merchant, ready to be plundered. The air is still. The night, dark. Silently, with muffled oars, longboats put out from the ships. Without a sound, men slink like reptiles into the very town. Then suddenly the air is rent with shrieks. From a dozen quarters comes the sound of fighting men. The Spaniards struggle from their beds, drunk with sleep, to defend themselves and their worth to no avail. Oh. <laughs> I, I am dreaming, Hunter, and there's still work for you to do. I'm lost in your dreams, too, Captain Morgan. What instructions have you for me? The provisioning of my other ships. I required other signatures from Sir Thomas Mufford. You'd best take off tomorrow evening and go and get them for me. I came as quickly as I could, Kitty. Come with me into the storeroom where we were once before. I have to talk to you, Jeffrey. What happened between you and Diaz earlier tonight? He was a little drunk, and he made all sorts of insinuations. Oh, what sort of thing? I cannot tell you here now. Come inside the storeroom. There are too many people all too interested to hear what I have to say. Jeffrey, we're both of us in some kind of bother. Oh, what sort of bother? Oh, it's Diaz and, and the things that he said to me and, and the way he's been behaving. It all makes me suspicious that he's plotting something that means no good to either of us. He hates you, Jeffrey, because I've given you my love. And he'll go to any lengths to have me for himself. What did he say or do to make you suspicious? Oh, it's been his general behavior. He's suddenly become boastful of how important he's going to be. Already his pockets are full of money. No? I know he's back again as a seaman aboard the Flying Gull, but... But tonight he said he didn't care about the Flying Gull anymore or about buccaneering. That those days were over for him. He suggested that perhaps I would not be here at the Dolphin Tavern much longer. And he told me that possibly... That possibly you would be found in the harbor with a knife between your ribs. Having first become the enemy of Henry Morgan. From what you say, it seems there is trouble afoot. But what can it be? Oh, Jeffrey, never before have I been frightened, but... But there's evil about Dietz. He even boasted that I might be pleased to return to him when I'd learned how faithless you were to me. Kitty, I... I only wish that we could... Please, I'll hear no more about it. Oh, my, how I've changed. Here I am now without one jealous thought in my head, and and now that I've told you all my fears, I feel better. All right, Jeffrey. Just kiss me once more, darling, before I return to my duties. Kitty, I... Oh, please, Jeffrey, and and that'll satisfy me for, for just a little while longer. Kitty, you're such a sweet person, I doubt if I could refuse you anything. I have some papers here from Captain Morgan which require the signature of Sir Thomas. Very good, sir. I'll see it right away, sir. Did I hear you talking to someone at the door, Peter? Yes, ma'am. This gentleman's from the flying girl, ma'am. And you keep him waiting at the door. Really, Peter, you deserve a whipping. Surely you know by now that Mr. Hunter is a friend of mine? Sorry, ma'am. I am so sorry, Jeffrey. Well, that's all right, Antoinette. All right, Peter. What are you waiting for? You may go. Very good, ma'am. I have been waiting for you, Jeffrey. When I learned from the message that you were coming, I wondered how I would feel the hours in. I've been wanting to see you all day. I hoped that I might slip away from the ship and see you, but Captain Morgan has kept me busy. But business papers have brought us together again. 
And with all the activity, surely it won't be long before you'll be saying goodbye to me. I don't care to think of goodbye. But please, Jeffrey, we cannot talk here in the doorway. Come through the French windows into the garden. The perfume of a tropical night will always remind me of you. Do I mean so much to you, Jeffrey? So much the parting is going to be almost unbearable. I was right, Antoinette. I, I should never have fallen in love with you. But it has meant so much to me. Uh, come with me into this arbor. The shrubs hide us from the eyes which might be prying from the house. You sound so sad tonight, Jeffrey. As though... As though it were goodbye. It might be goodbye. The times I will see you again are going to be very few. Captain Morgan told me to be prepared to sail any time now. Then he has the news he has been waiting for? Yes. And it is dangerous, isn't it, Jeffrey? Oh, I, I can see by your face. I think the scheme is crazy. How Morgan thinks he can sail a ship up a river past a closely guarded fort, sack a town, then return to sea safely, I do not know. He's going to do that? Uh, since you told me about it, I have been looking at the map of Nicaragua. Uh, there must be only one town on the river which is big enough to hold ships. That one town is enough. I don't see us being successful. Morgan is relying solely on the surprise of our attack. He expects Santa Paula to fall into our hands overnight. We'll then send men to take the fort from the rear. Oh, but Antoinette, don't let's talk among these things. I've only a few short hours left with you. Oh, how heavy is my heart. Hold me in your arms tightly and kiss me. Kiss me, Jeffrey, and tell me that you love me. I do love you, Antoinette. I love you with all my heart. There's no denying it now. Oh, you are so wonderful. Oh, but come. I must return to the house. Uh, Sir Thomas, he will be wondering what has happened to me. Uh, take my arm, Jesse. By returning to the house, does it mean I must bid you good night? No. No, of course not. Now, do you believe me, Kitty? Oh, all that he should have done this to me. It would seem I'd been mistaken in you, dear. But I warned Jeffrey Hunter. I warned him to beware if he played me false. Very well. We shall see now. We shall see. Jeffrey is now caught in the trap. And with Kitty's love turned to hate, will she try to destroy him? Listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Oh, <laughs>